New games this month, and yes, this video is a little later than usual, but I do think December is often an easy month to overlook after the craziness of the months that do precede it, but there's actually some solid options that may just make their way to your Nintendo Switch library. My name's Alex, this is Switch Corner, and if you enjoy the video, subscribe. We're pushing for 60,000 subscribers to close out 2023, and we are so very close. First up then, a few games that already did drop, free in fact, so let's talk about them. Batman Arkham Trilogy, a game I've been excited for since announcement, and after it was delayed last month, I was confident it was going to come out in decent shape, you know, they were taking the time they needed. But unfortunately, that confidence was misguided. I've been playing it. Arkham Knight, as an example, hits around 20 FPS in the Batmobile, which you hope for more, for sure. But I was at least thinking Arkham Asylum would be stable, and that is not the case either, unfortunately. I'd be looking to play this on another system. Sadly, it's just not worth the price of admission. Then, in better news, Steam World Build is great fun, a city building management game that features dungeon combat and defensive mechanics, and you can check out my full review in the pinned comments. Finally, for games out now, Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince, and no review codes went out, it seems, which makes me a little nervous, but that may just be a knee-jerk reaction following the negativity that surrounded the adventures of Dai, a game I personally enjoyed. I love the look of this, but I'll be speaking more to it soon when I drop my ranking of Dragon Quest games on the Switch later in the month. Alright, so with that, new games and we're kicking things off with Skater XL. It's making its debut on the Switch, offering a unique skateboarding experience touted as the most realistic and responsive on the platform. Now, the Switch version's promising to maintain 60 FPS in both handheld and duct mode, which is definitely music to my ears. Skater XL then is an open, creative sandbox where players can skate, film, hang out, and create at their own pace. It even features online support for up to 10 players, so they can basically skate or chill together. It will also then have a huge mod catalog available at launch, giving us instant access to user-generated skate gear and maps, which can only be a good thing for longevity. And on top of all of this, it promises real-life pros and a soundtrack that to me at least sounds like a winner. It features artists such as Modest Mouse, Interpol, and Future Islands. It's available already on other platforms, I've not played it myself, but I'm definitely excited about this one, but it is promising a lot. Today's video is sponsored by the epic naval combat game World of Warships. Celebrating its 8th anniversary, World of Warships is a team-based sea battle game that's all about strategy and tactics. You can join forces with friends in a division and dive into battles together, and with more than 500 historical ships from 11 different nations, the game offers a faster sea of choices. Whether you prefer the agility of destroyers, the balance of cruisers, the firepower of battleships, or the strategic depth of aircraft carriers, each class provides a unique experience. These ships aren't just any ships either, they're designed based on actual blueprints and historical documents. Essentially, you're going to be steering history here. Plus, it features stunning graphics and living landscapes with changing weather conditions, which make every single battle unique. You can even customize your ships for both aesthetics and performance, and you can also expect some seriously special IP crossovers, such as Transformers and the Sewer Lane. Finally, World of Warships isn't just for PC or mobile either, there's actually a version for PlayStation and Xbox too. World of Warships and is completely free and there's never been a better time to try it out by registering an account through the link in the description you're going to get an exclusive starter pack now this pack is worth 25 dollars it includes 500 doubloons seven days of premium 1.5 million credits and also a special ship in the class of your choice with a six skill point commander just use the invite code bravo and you can check out the link in the pinned comments to learn more about it Born of Bread is a wacky RPG where players lead a golem made of bread named Loaf on a quest to save the day. Now the story unfolds as ancient beans cause havoc and Loaf with his newfound friends finds himself in the midst of a drama thousands of years in the making. Now this 2.5D adventure stands out with its turn-based combat which plays with traditional mechanics by adding interactive elements that challenge players' reflexes and strategic thinking, especially in exploiting enemies' weaknesses and resistances. Alongside Loaf then is a cast of characters, each with distinct abilities essential for navigation. With its interesting narrative, modified combat system and colourful world, Born of Bread could be a great one to add to the library because I personally do love the luck of it. A Highland Song games to be an evocative adventure set in the Scottish Highlands, blending open platforming and dynamic storytelling. Now here, players take on the role of Myra McKinnon, a young woman embarking on a journey 
across the wilderness to reach the sea. This is spurred by a letter from her uncle Hamish promising a surprise at his lighthouse for Beltane. The gameplay includes platforming elements like scaling peaks and exploring caves, and this is coupled with survival aspects where players battle against environmental challenges such as wind, rain, cold and hunger. I love the visual style that they've went for with this 2.5D adventure game. It appears to be hand drawn to me. I'm also curious to hear the soundtrack which has been composed alongside a Scottish band, so yeah, definitely curious to see where this one goes. War the Iron's Hut is a crafting adventure set in early and a land renowned for its artisans, and here players step into the boots of a journeyman blacksmith aiming to become a master smith. The game revolves around forging, smelting and assembling metal to create items and develop smithing skills. As players progress, they explore an island rich in resources and puzzles, and also will interact with a cast of characters. The game's world is bright and mystical, offering a combat-free journey, and one of our main tasks it seems is to rebuild Stahl, a once great blacksmith's village. Seems this will be for those that enjoy the more wholesome and calm side of gaming, but I do like the spin here and the move beyond the typical farming adventure. Outer Wilds is an acclaimed open world mystery game set in a solar system caught in an endless time loop, earning the title of best game at the 2020 BAFTA Game Awards and Game of the Year 2019 from several prominent publications. Now in this adventure, players join Outer Wilds Ventures, a space program dedicated to uncovering the secrets of a constantly changing solar system. Here, players will explore various mysteries such as the unique dark bramble and alien ruins on the moon, and all of this is for the possibility of stopping the time loop. The game's world then dynamically evolves with time presenting hidden locations on its planets that do transform, think revealing underground cities or crumbling landscapes. Surviving and saving the day really is the idea here. Now additionally then, the game has two versions, dropping the base game and the archaeologist edition. The latter includes the echoes of the IDLC, adding a mysterious satellite photo and a new museum exhibit that invites players for one final expedition. This DLC poses a question, should players unravel the solar system's deepest secrets or are some truths better left undiscovered? I own this game on PC and PlayStation, I would suggest the edition with a DLC because Quite frankly, the game is a masterpiece. It is one of my top games of recent memory, and I've been waiting now so long for this one to drop. Just hopefully, they've got the performance where it needs to be. In Hammerwatch 2, players are plunged into an adventure set in the Kingdom of Herion, now under the dark shadow of Blight the Horrible and his dragon army. Now, this sequel emerging from the chaos of King Roland's overthrow centers around the King's hidden resistance movement. Basically, you're based in the depths of the Kingdom's sewers. Players take up the mantle of heroic characters, each uniquely skilled, tasked with the critical mission of combating Blight's forces and restoring order to the lands. So true to the spirit of classic ARPGs, Hammerwatch 2 invites players to traverse the fast realms of Hammer Island, the Fallow Fields and the treacherous Black Barrow. Expect then day and night cycles and weather changes to really impact your journey as well. And then with multiple classes, abilities to unlock and online co-op for four players, I've got a feeling this one could keep you busy for a long time. They're also releasing then a bundle which packs in the anniversary edition of the first game if you do want that whole collection. Kamaju Romilia 2 Strangers Requiem, a sequel to the side-scrolling Castlevania-influenced action game Kamaju Romilia Scarlet Symphony, returns with its distinctive gothic horror Toho action. Yes, it features characters from the Toho project, but with a bold, dark edge. Now here, it's set in a world where the boundary between life and death blurs. The game centers on Sakura, as she embarks on a journey to the mysteriously reappeared Scarlet Devil Castle to find Romilia and her missing companions. Also along the way, you'll be finding clues to a vanished spring. Features remastered HD graphics, voice acting, and expanded content. Seems we can expect a lot of close range combat in this one, but it also introduces a backstep to dodge incoming attacks, special abilities, and also the ability to fly. The original game was short, but I really enjoyed it. I'll link my review in the pinned comment below, but I'm hoping this one here is a worthy follow up. Pinball M is a new horror infused pinball experience where the base game is free and it includes a free table, that is Wrath of the Elder Gods Director's Cut. What has me most interested however is the DLC bundle with four tables. So first up is Chucky's Killer Pinball, a table that transforms the innocent into the sinister. Players here navigate a creepy playfield where the iconic Chucky lurks, 
ready to basically spring from the shadows. Next, the Finger Pinball takes players to the icy confines of US Outpost 31, challenging them to battle a shape-shifting alien menace, probably my favourite of the bunch that one. Then there's Dead by Daylight Pinball, a fusion of classic pinball action and the intense horror of one of the most renowned horror games out there right now. Players here find themselves in the dual roles of Hunter and Hunted, adding a new dynamic to pinball, which I'm actually curious to see in action. Finally, Duke Nukem's Big Shot Pinball offers a table that's as big and bold as a character himself, brimming with guns, action, and an unapologetically macho attitude. This table invites players to play with balls of steel in a setting that's both groovy and badass. I do enjoy my digital pinball, so I'll be jumping on this bundle personally, but no doubt you can pick them up individually as well. And that's the video down. What will you be checking out this month? Have you picked up something already? Let us know in the comments with that. Hit subscribe. Join us here for reviews, deals, news analysts daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.